Hello and welcome to Hazer Media's course breakdown of Breakwell Steel Warwick, located in Warwick, New York. This is one of three courses located in Warwick Town Park. Today we'll be taking a look at the blue tees to the blue baskets. This layout is 18 holes, par 65, at 8,158 feet. One note is that the distances in this video are grabbed from UDISC, not the T signs. So they may be a little bit shorter, a little bit longer, but you'll get the general sense of the hole either way. So let's get started on hole one. It's a par three at 321 feet, although it is uphill the entire way. So it plays closer to 360 to 375. There is an OB island to the left, right before you get up to the basket. So you want to avoid that. Other than that, it's fairly wide open, so any shot that you have to get up there will give you a shot of your birdie. Hole two is a par four at 492 feet. It is a dog leg right, so your first shot wants to go as far as you can down the straight part of the fairway, finishing to the right. If you can get all the way out into this open field, you're gonna set yourself up for a pretty clean second shot. A couple of gaps to hit in the left or right of this bunker of trees slightly more uphill and then back downhill to this basket that's located on the edge of a rock pile. Hole three is a par four at 405 feet. Pretty wide open fairway until you get further up towards the green. You wanna get as much distance and have something fading from left to right. Once you get down to this part of the fairway, there's a lot of trees to miss. You want to land in a spot to be able to clear this rock wall. Otherwise, your putt will be extremely elevated and very difficult to make for the birdie. Hole four is a par three at 258 feet. You wanna hit this main fairway and then have something very stable that's going to finish hard left and go past the silver basket all the way down the hill to this blue basket. But you have to be careful not to go too far because of the out of bounds road behind. Hole five is a par three at 369 feet and a very difficult birdie. You want to hit this main gap and get as far up the hill as you can on your first shot. Very few shots will make it far enough up the hill to give yourself a shot at a birdie. And after either your first, second, or maybe even third throw, the basket is located on yet another rock pile. This course does have four layouts, and if you'd like to see a breakdown of any of the other layouts, please let me know down below in the comments. Hole six is a par four at 424 feet. Off the tee, you have a backhand hyzer shot that you want to land somewhere left of this big tree. That will set you up with another hyzer shot towards the basket. However, you have to be careful of the steep drop off behind the pin that can set up a difficult comebacker. Hole seven is a par three at 451 feet. Blind pin from the tee due to the uphill terrain. There's a few different ways to get to this basket. Forehand line, a backhand hyzer line, or this one we're looking at right up the middle. Whatever you're most comfortable with gets you up near the basket, but not too far as you go into the out of bounds parking lot. Hole eight is a par four and only 334 feet. However, due to the shape of the fairway, this plays much longer. You're going to need to throw a shot that bends hard to the right, and you're trying to clear this rock wall on your first shot. Once out in the open, you can see the basket, but there is an out of bounds peninsula just short of it that you need to go around or clear. Once you do that, you do have a wide open grassy green. Hole nine is a par four at 435 feet. You need to go through this field, up through the gap, and then you're gonna make a hard left. There is an out of bounds peninsula on the left side that you can try to test, but most players will go around to the outside where we're seeing the drone fly now. Landing around here for your first shot will set you up for a fairly easy second shot as long as you don't go too far past the basket into the woods, giving you a potential obstructed putt. Hole 10 is a par three at 400 feet. From the tee, you'll be throwing across this field and over the crest of this hill. A backhand hyzer is a good choice because the fairway curves around this island of trees and along the hill up towards the basket. Not much to deal with except for one fallen tree. There is one other option to play a bit more aggressive, and that's to try to go through the island of trees on your first shot and give you a potential eagle look. 
Hole 11 stands out as one of the more scenic holes on this course. It's a par 3 at 307 feet with a winding creek that you can throw over once or even twice depending on the line that you choose. You can take it left and a little bit safer or try to go right and cross it twice to try to get up to the green in your first shot. Hole 12 is a par 3 at 186 feet, although I believe it plays a bit further than that because of the tight left turn that you have to make. If you get your tee shot up near the green, you'll have woods and a low ceiling to deal with. Give yourself a potential birdie. Hole 13 is a par 4 at 484 feet. It's a perfectly straight shot to get out of the gap and into this open field. If you're trying to get as far up this hill in your first shot as you can, because with 40 to 50 feet of elevation and a few trees to deal with on your second shot, being further up this hill will only make it easier for your approach to this wide open green. Hole 14 is a par 4 at 730 feet. Your tee shot is pretty wide open to the left, so you want to stay away from this rock wall and row of trees to give yourself as much air space as you need to get the distance required for this hole. If you're trying to get as close as you can to the wood line to set yourself up for an opportunity to reach this peninsula green on your second shot. Another one of the most scenic greens you'll see on this course, it does set up for a challenging second shot as there's low hanging branches and water all around the green. Hole 15 is a par four at 632 feet. You're initially trying to hit this gap above the rock wall and out into the open. A hyzer shot that flips up to flat and then finishes back left is a good shot for your first throw. The way the drone is flying is the way the T sign says to play this hole. However, there's a line to go through the woods to the left here to access the pin. We'll see as the drone flies this way, playing this hole through the second gap with a hard left turn will make it very difficult to get your birdie. Play it through the sneaky left gap and you may give yourself a chance. Hole 16 is a par 3 at 387 feet. Throwing over the silver tee pad and across the road. You're trying to get past this bunker of trees and over the rock wall to access the green. If you do that, you'll have a wide open look at your birdie. Hole 17 is a par 4 at 703 feet. It's the most wide open fairway on the entire course, so whatever you have to get as much distance as you can is what you should throw here. Finishing on the right side near the out of bounds line is something that will make your second shot a bit easier. However, with the basket tucked just into the woods, you should have an approach shot from just about anywhere. And we arrive to hole 18, the only par 5 on the course at 841 feet. Downhill initially through a fairly tight wooded gap, back out into the open. Your first shot wants to land somewhere around here at the top of this hill. Further left makes your second shot easier as you approach this second gap. Depending on exactly where your lie is, you can throw through or over these sets of trees. Trying to land past the silver basket is a good idea to try to set yourself up for about 250 to 300 feet into the wide open green of the basket for hole 18. Do all that and you'll finish Breakwell Steel Warwick on a high note. And there you have it, Breakwell Steel Warwick Blue Tees to Blue Baskets. Again, there are quite a few layouts in this course, so comment down below if you'd like to see breakdowns for some of the other layouts. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to Heiser Media if you haven't. We also have a Patreon where we have exclusive content and monthly disc giveaways. So if you'd like to support us that way, please check the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next hole.